Hey everyone, today I've got two really exciting scenarios for us. First, we're going to take a film noir scene and not only turn it into a full movie scene, but also the family room that's watching that movie. Secondly, we're going to look at a very intuitive way to use Canvas to adjust the poses of your characters. As always, please feel free to subscribe and like, share with your friends. Also, I just launched my website, so please feel free to check it out and share. All right, let's get going. Okay, for our first scenario, we're gonna walk through a few different stages. And always, I have the resources linked in the description, so you're gonna be able to download them and follow along. But we wanna start with our characters. And you'll see, I started with our typical loader. I have a, an epic detailed scene uh, with some characters. I made sure that they were black and white. So I, I wanna make sure it's gonna be overlayable. And um, everything else is pretty much the same. I have a typical uh, skin and eye detailers. I do include the face detailer because sometimes the images, the faces won't be as clear. Um, so I have that hooked up as well, but otherwise it's pretty standard. So going to our next stage here, we're going to auto select the background. And the reason we're using the background as opposed to the characters is we're going to do a lot of cutting out of that background area when we overlay it into our full composited scene. So it's pretty easy. We're using the uh, Dino uh, Segment Anything node as we've done in previous videos. And we're going to just select that background. The threshold stays uh, the same as default. So moving on to stage three, uh, we are now going to generate our background scene. Uh, similarly to the other one, we did a black and white scene, though this time I included a single red color saturation. That was gonna allow the streetcar to become fire engine red here. Uh, one thing you'll notice that sometimes will happen, if I zoom way in here, you'll see it actually has a little bit of the other part of the scene red as well, um, and that's fine. We have an area uh, of the scene of this workflow that we're going to use for cleanup, so uh, it'll be fine, but this is a really great way to show kind of that stark saturation uh, for a colorization scene. Okay, on to stage four. Now we're gonna composite our scene. So as we've done in other videos, we're using the join with alpha. If I zoom out here, right, where's the image coming from? It's coming directly from our render, right? Actually from the face detailer. And the alpha, right, what's our mask? The mask is coming from our dyno module here. And so that's going to then just select the uh, background, which as we know from the image overlay, when you add that mask here, it's going to reverse it. Uh, so we don't have to flip the uh, mask in this case because we already selected the right stuff in the first place. And it's going to then overlay the couple, as you can see here. Now, one thing to note, after I've obviously scaled it and positioned it, right, I've resized it here by scale, I've taken it down about 30%, and I've also changed the uh, X and Y offset to kind of position it over here. Looks like they're almost going to get run over, but I think they'll be okay. And um, But one thing you'll notice is you'll see this like white line up here, right? And a little bit of the outline of the characters themselves. And not to worry, that'll actually be fine because when we re-render and bake it at the end, uh, all that stuff will go away. However, that one line will be a little bit pesky. And so I have a little solution for that as well. All right, let's go to stage five. So this is kind of that minor cleanup um, uh, stage. Now, before that, right, we want to do kind of a first time uh, image to image render, right? It does a little bit of the cleanup. Um, so basically I've I kept it very simple for the prompt, uh, just 1940s film, noir, couple kissing, etc. cetera. Um, nothing, uh, I did add a little bit of cinematic green scratches. I think that'll add a little bit of texture to it. And as you can see, if I zoom in here, it actually does a pretty good job of taking out a little bit of all that extra white outline. Um, in fact, it's kind of cool that a little bit of that white adds to the shimmer uh, of uh, almost like a light reflection, which is cool. But as you can see, that one line across the top is a little bit annoying. Um, but again, this is not the end of the world because we still have to clean up that little bit of red behind the trolley car as well. And so this is this next stage where we're going to do that. So we're going to do this together. I'm going to, I could try to do uh, the SAM uh, detector to try to select it, but it's so small and so little. Uh, I actually find it easier just to do a very quick mask editor. And you can see I'm basically going to just draw my mask right across that line, across the top. I'm not going to worry about the building, even though you can kind of see it, it will actually go away 
when you do your uh, denoising as part of the final kind of baking in process. But I am kind of selecting all this right up to the car right there. Uh, and then we're also going to select our red car behind here because we obviously do not want that since that detracts from the scene. Um, and that's it. I'm going to save the node and we're good to go. Now, if you see, if I go to stage six, that's our in painting cleanup, right? So we're basically taking our masked area and bring it into our VAE encode for in painting. I did increase the mask a little bit to 12 instead of six um, because I want to make sure that it's going to do a decent job of blending it all. Um, and then again, for that little white line and that little bit of car behind it, um, I did say to just have background buildings. And when I rerun this, you could see that the line is now gone. And in fact, the uh, red car behind it is gone as well. So this is great. Um, you can see also one other thing uh, in the denoise, I kept it to 0.67. So I didn't do it too high, too, too low. Of course, as you're playing with it, you'll see uh, if you add a little bit too much, it may add too much building and therefore detracts from the background. And then if you do too little, then it's obviously not going to affect the line as always. So that denoise from the other videos as we've done, it's important to play with it a little bit. You can again run it and then use your process here to kill it if it's uh, not giving you the desired effect. Um, but you can see it has done a pretty good job of again removing those elements. Uh, and we are now ready for stage seven. So stage seven is the out painting, right? We basically have our final image here of our scene. Now we want to actually turn it and put it into the family room. So uh, I did reduce a little bit of the size to 70% um, so that it, it doesn't uh, overtake the entire screen. Uh, and so the, uh, but in terms of the out padding, uh, I throw, you know, about 500 pixels to the left and the right, a little bit to the bottom. Um, uh, and actually not that much on the top because I was kind of imagining the TV just as you kind of see it here. Now, because we are kind of in painting the out padded information, uh, the mask, right, is that black area from the out painting padding. And uh, obviously the image is from uh, the upscale, which is actually the downscale uh, that we just did. And so when we do that, we want to obviously now describe the scene around the film noir scene. So in this case, a 51 year old woman facing away, blowing a nose with the Kleenex, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we have a mounted screen. Um, I do you know, take care of some of the hand issues that I've seen before. Um, originally there was a very long arm that just appeared. Um, so you can play with the, the positive and the negative prompting to your end scene, um, but you can see you're trying to get to that right spot. Um, and then finally, that's going to get you to uh, any sort of final image resolution or resizing that you want to do. Um, and this is actually something new because we haven't done this before. So I'm going to show you these two nodes. Uh, one, sometimes when you're playing with different image resolutions, in painting, uh, padding, etc., you may lose track of what's that final image resolution size. So in the Chris nodes, the ones that have the monitor here, um, so you don't have to download anything if you already have this Chris node monitor in installed is something called get resolution. You just basically pipe it in uh, and it tells you what it is. In fact, the other benefit is that you can then pipe out the width and the height to other uh, areas of your workflow, which is pretty cool. And then the other one is actually resizing. So you may want to resize your image back to a particular uh, size instead of scaling it. And so in this case, uh, this is by the various comfy UI nodes. It's a custom node. And uh, in this case, I just wanted to do my 1344 by 768, obviously reversed, um, just because the parameters are reversed, but it's basically 1344 width, right? And then height is the 768. And then from there, obviously into the preview. So you can see final image is really cool. We have our women that are watching the TV show um, and have Kleenexes, which is kind of fun and dramatic. Okay, on to our next one. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of engagement on this one as well. Um, so I wanted to basically show how we can take any scene where we have people interacting um, or characters interacting, and we want to change their pose. Now, of course, you can take things through uh, DW pose and use control net to do a pose control net aspect. Um, it takes a lot of extra work, right? You have to download the pose or generate the pose and then 
be able to to adjust the different weights and all, etc. And I found a cool novel way using Canvas to do this. So we're just going to start with a uh, again with our normal loader here um, with our blackboard, right? We're kind of with scientific equations. We're going to basically put a teacher here and be able to have her point to a different area. And so have a kind of a fun little college blackboard here. Um, again, nothing too crazy in terms of the initial render. So we're going to go to stage two here. We're going to add our subject, which is our teacher. So we just have a teacher holding chalk in one hand. And there she is. Now, obviously, we're going to want to reposition her and also so that she's pointing to the right blackboard, right? This is obviously not the blackboard we've generated. And so we're going to go on to stage three. So compositing, as we've done with the film noir scene, um, obviously right now she's by default in the middle. We want to move her a little bit to the right. So I'm going to kind of change the offset here a little bit and re-render. Okay. And we're now going to want to go to stage four. Now stage four is blank, right? This is what we're going to do together. Uh, so first we're going to create our send to canvas as we always do. Um, and we're also going to bring in our canvas node. Um, as part of the normal setup, right? We're going to just get rid of these images and we're going to change this incoming images to uh, add the layer, right? So this is going to create a new image once we send an image in. And so we're going to basically take our composited shot and we're going to go to send and we'll just hit our little rerun here. Uh, once you rerun it the first time, uh, you're going to want to disable or delete that node, right? Because every time uh, you rerun it, if you accidentally leave it open, it's going to continue sending in new images or potentially replacing images, and that's not the desired effect. So typically, after I send it in the first time, I'll want to disable it right away. Um, so you can see we have our image here. Now, obviously, we have her hand. We've got a little piece of chalk here. Not quite what we want, right? We want to have her kind of pointing over here, maybe pointing up here a little differently. Um, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to use the little eyedropper here. We're going to draw directly on this layer. And you can see I'm going to just increase the size of the font here. And so we're going to just match the colors, right? And it's kind of a Photoshop trick. I used to do it all the time. You're just matching the colors. So I use the eyedropper on the blackboard, going to my brush, saying, you know, goodbye hand. I don't need you here. Um, and the colors don't have to be perfect, by the way, because when you go and re-render the scene, um, the AI engine knows that, oh, that's the rest of the arm, or that's the hand, or that's the head, um, and it'll start to regenerate for you. So as long as you're close, um, it's actually not so bad. Um, so I'm basically just matching the shirt color, and I'm going to like point over here. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of is if you make the arm too long, uh, you could get some very interesting uh, scenes here. So you're going to want to have it you know, relatively close in terms of the anatomy of your character, does not, again, doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be close enough. Um, and so I'm going to also match the uh, skin tone here and redraw. And as you know, I'm not Bob Ross. I don't know how. There we go. All right. So she's kind of pointing here. And that's pretty much it. Now, I have a feeling it's going to render it a little too long, um, but we're going to keep it for now and maybe we'll fix it again. So after we do our drawing, right, make sure that your canvas is selected appropriately. And when you come here, obviously you can see that your changes have taken effect into the canvas area. And then that's gonna lead us to our last stage over here, our final polishings, right? So basically we're gonna create a final image to image render here. We're going to take our image, draw it into the VA encode. We'll just say a teacher pointed to a blackboard. And as normal, right, we have around 0.69. That seems to be about the right level of denoise always. Um, I find that sometimes you can do more, a little less, um, but not so bad. And you can see right here, look, it renders it pretty good. Now, a little bit funky on the face, right? A little bit, you know, in terms of the fingers, we're gonna wanna use our bad hands or bad finger prompts and, and adjust again. Always feel free to come back here to adjust this. Or another option is you can start with this scene and, you know, send it back into your canvas again. So send to canvas and then you're here again. Now, one thing you'll want to make sure you do in here, of course, I would just create a new layer and hit the right, right click to target it. And again, we're replacing the targeted layer. This will just layer it on top so that you don't lose your original image, um, just in case you ever want to come back to it again. And when you run it again, you'll see your new image is here, which is fine. 
um, you might say, well, I, I don't want the finger pointing there, uh, but it's actually a finger now, which is great. So you may want to just color over, you know, this part of the hand. And again, you may want to have it like pointing, pointing up, right? So we're going to just maybe, maybe decrease the size there. And we'll say, yeah, we want it. We want her kind of pointing up here, like, like so. Um, and that's it. And so after this, of course, as always, right, make sure it's all active. Um, and then your canvas, of course, is all the way over here, but you could see that it's taken effect. And so it's already connected up. So if you re-render, it should actually have your new image. Now I could see you may want to bring down that denoise quite a bit, um, but you can see you're now pointing right. Now, again, the face is a little funkier this time. So you may want to, again, do another face detail, et cetera. But it's a really easy way to kind of create the poses you want uh, without having to go through all that other exciting stuff with DW Pose and Control Net, et cetera. So hope this was helpful as always. Please feel free to subscribe. Please feel free to check out the new website and we'll talk soon.